Yeah, I mean, they were all right, but they had too many cats on the roof. I, I, I don't understand why cats are on the roof, but yet I can't get my Aunt Jemima pancake syrup. And I don't know, I can't. Well, till they bring back Aunt Your Mama, I'm going to wear my underwear inside out. You know what, guys? I turned my underwear inside out anyway, and that we're supposed to do. You wear one side for a while, and then when it starts to get dirty, you flip it over inside out, and boom, you got clean underwear on. That's fucking disgusting, Joe. I don't even wash my underwear. I burn it and buy all new underwear. Actually, I don't buy them underwear. Melanie's nanny's nanny's cousin, who we hired as their professional shopper, buys my underwear. Holy shit, that is a lot of information, Donald. You sure went in the pure detail on your underwear buying habits, which, by the way, we really didn't want to know all that. But, but anyway, I digress. What are we going to do today, gentlemen? You silly Beatrix of four kids eight know that silly rabbit I forgot. Anyway, today we're going to do high history. This game started when we had Joe Rogan on the show a couple weeks ago, and this will be high history part two as we have done it before. Seeing how we are doing high history, I have decided to bring back Joe Rogan since he, well, let's just say has a passion for this sort of thing. But before we do that, I have to throw this frying pan at Sleepy Joe to wake him up. <sighs> What the fuck did you do that for, Mark? Jesus, jumping Jimmy H. Christ, I was trying to sleep over here. Gee golly, Willow Cruz is really smart to damn you guys. Why, you always got to be like this. What's the matter, Joe? We too rough on you, and maybe you should go to the mental hospital. I mean the retirement home. Oh, who am I kidding? A little bit of calling me a little bit of column B. Well, you guys ready to eat hot dogs and play high history? Oh, by the way, Trump, I knew it was you that put an opossum in my bathtub last night. I'll get you back. Don't you worry, buddy. Well, here's something you probably didn't know. George Washington never chopped down a cherry tree. It was an apple tree. And the reason why he chopped it down was because he did like climbing trees. So he brought the tree down to his level just so he could pick apples. George Washington also used to wipe his butt with his fringes on his sleeves like he pulled them off and then wipe his butt with them and get new fringes every time he was kind of the modern and been her toilet paper although here's a little nugget of information you probably didn't know toilet paper was actually around during two million bc when the egyptians took mummy wrap and started wiping their butts with it well here's something you didn't know or here's something you already knew they used to have vibrators and women's masturbators in dental offices also queen elizabeth i invented the first vibrator Guys, I really got to go pee. Please hold my spot for me. I don't want George W. Bush or somebody like that to step in while I'm gone. We'll try to hold your spot, but I can't really promise you anything. We're totally taking your spot right. Oh yeah, totally. Let me take a head off of this real quick and introduce our special guest. <laughs> Anyway, and, uh, like I was saying, that guy that likes to enter the room with that funny hat on his head, the king of you know what, Ben Shapiro. Well, guys, it's my pleasure to be here in honor of high history. Did you know that the Wright brothers first started trying to use the pillars as forms of their travel? What do you mean the Wright brothers use people or hats as form of air travel? Did you also know that they used giant box fans strapped to their back with them pushed downwards, but then realize it didn't work because they didn't have long enough of an extension cord? Did you know that Leonardo da Vinci was the first Batman before the Wright brothers came along? He developed these large as bat wings as means of flight, but then just turned out to be a giant hang glider. But back then in his days, that was considered flight, and therefore he was actually the first inventor of flying to speak of, but actually the ancient Egyptians had drawings of airplanes inside of their tombs. Hey everybody, this is Matt Wash. <laughs> no, I'm not. Hold on. Hey everybody, this is Matt Wash, and uh, I just wanted to say for the record, the ancient Egyptians had cell phones, UFOs, microwaves, I do believe, and uh, yeah, also airplanes. Hey everybody, I won't let you know that was not Matt Walsh. I know Matt Walsh, I work with Matt Walsh, and that was definitely not Matt Walsh. But speaking of Matt Walsh, which it obtains to high history. Did you know that Matt Wash once went to Wax Museum and stood there for eight hours straight, jump scaring people pretending to be himself? 
That doesn't surprise me. I mean, the guy doesn't even know what a woman even is. But speaking to Matt Walsh, did you know he once defecated down an elevator and sent it to the sixth floor? I'm not sure what's on the sixth floor or what building he defecated in, but he didn't even have to take a crap like he just forced the crap out of himself. Well, you definitely don't want to do that. I could tear up your abdominal muscles that could rip your stomach apart. It could blow your butt full out. And then what? And then you're left just defecating whenever you don't even feel like it. I know how that feels. It happens to me all the time. Well, you guys stop. You're literally talking shit. Matt Walsh did not do any of those things. He's my friend. I happen to know this. Well, okay, he's not my friend. He's an acquaintance. Well, okay, he's not an acquaintance. He's somebody that I had a podcast with once. But anyway, stop talking shit about Matt Walsh before he gets on there and starts talking about us once he does it. We are totally canceled, and I'm not even kidding right now. Well, okay, then. Did you guys know what we all know about the pilgrims and Indians having a feast, and they called it Thanksgiving? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not being politically correct. It's Native Americans. Oh, Christ, give me a break. Anyway, the cabbers and Native Americans also had a feast on that same exact day. I'm not even kidding. They were shooting at each other one day, and then this little Indian, I mean, Native American girl got right in the line of fire, and none of the bullets nor none of the arrows hit her. And she put up her hands and said something in Native American. Then they literally stopped fighting and decided to sit down and have a meal. And their first meal was chicken and beans with scallop potatoes. Hey, get it, scallop potatoes. I kill me. A very funny. You know, you really shouldn't tell Native American jokes, though, if you're not Native American. I mean, come on, Donald, show some sensibilities for crying out loud. And it's not, ha, huh, I kill me. It's like this. Ha, huh, I kill me. Ho, ho, ho. Hey, is that a cat? Hey, Elf Buddy, how you been? Remember that time you and me snuck in the Wrestlemania 3 and got front row seats? Also, it was no joke. I was telling you the truth about high history with the scarlet potato thing. First of all, learn to take a joke, Mr. Rogan. And then second of all, I am 3-4 Cherokee. Therefore, I am allowed to tell this kind of joke. So put that in your barn and smoke it. I'm surprised you didn't say put it in my peace pipe and smoke it. Speaking of smoking, one second here. <sighs> I'm holding it. <laughs> oh man. Man, that hit real hard. Speaking of hitting hard, everyone knows that heavyweight champion of the world, Mike Tyson, has one of the hardest punches in all of history. But did you know that Teddy Theodor Roosevelt had one of the hardest punches in all of the world? He once punched the side of a mountain so hard that it actually developed it to his face. That's what started Rush Mount Moore. And then, of course, it took professional sculptors to do the wrist. But Teddy Theodore Roosevelt was one tough son of a bitch. Oh yeah, well I bet you didn't know that Abraham Lincoln was one tough son of a bitch as well. He was a wrestler. And I know that in our last video we established just how good of a wrestler he was. But did you know that he actually spiked one of the first spikes in the railroad? Like, I mean, after it was completed, of course, but it just took him one drive. Well, maybe two drives, one to get started. And the second one that went all the way into the railroad track. And it was a huge spike too, but he had like this huge sledgehammer. And he pulled all the way back, he took off his shirt, and those days, that's what you did, you just took off your shirt, cause you were a man, and you didn't care what you had underneath, the Abe Lincoln didn't have to worry about that car, he had a hell of a physique. Foghorn Leghorn was the inspiration for Colonel Sanders. I mean, you can just tell with the way he talked. Originally, Foghorn Leghorn was supposed to have a ball tie, but actually Colonel Sanders took a look at Colonel Parker, which was Elvis Presley's manager at the time, and he went out in a suit that looked just like his with the bow tie and everything, and then he practiced speaking like Foghorn Leghorn in order to sell a chicken because he realized people would buy chicken if they heard it coming from a voice of a giant chicken or in Foghorn Leghorn's case, a giant rooster, but same difference. I had a cousin that was quite a bit older than me, and he had a Apollo Abdul poster in his room, and he was like 13 years old, and I was probably like eight or something like that. But anyway, he was just constantly staring at that poster in the one night I was over there staying the night, and I would just see the covers constantly pump up and down, and honestly thought it was his knee going up and down because he couldn't sleep, and you know how your legs move a lot while you sleep. I thought it was that, but guys, I got to tell you, it totally was not that. I didn't find out until later in life, and boy, did it, did it scar me. But in relation to high history, Paula Abdul probably got a lot of boys through puberty with her bathing suit posters and her cheerleading posters, you know, I'm just saying, oh, and also she was a Rams cheerleader. Wait, no, I mean a Raiders cheerleader leader oh man i totally fucked that up can i start all over guys no ben no you could not start all over in fact i don't want to hear any more stories coming out of your mouth whatsoever you have scarred each and every one of us for life with that damn story and you need to go get counseling my friend now may i suggest that this be the end of high history for this video what do you say obama yes i couldn't agree more with everything you just said especially the ben shapiro story i feel like stabbing my eardrums out now but anyway, yes, this concludes high history. I'm going to go home, eat some mac and cheese, 
and junk food because Michael, I mean Michelle's not home yet. She is doing her yoga class. And that is the perfect opportunity for me to junk food and foods that are high in carbureted fats. Yep, I'm going to go to boys. My buzz is going down. I'm going down for the count. It's getting late. I'll see you guys tomorrow either on Discord or maybe I'll just stop by after grabbing a few dozen donuts. Who knows? Anyway, peace out, y'all. Well, I guess it is up to me to play as out as usual. So I'll just say that I enjoyed High History Part 2, but don't you folks at home forget to go back and watch Part 1. We are missing a lot of views on that one. And also don't forget to subscribe to Comedy Danks. They need your support and they make some pretty damn good videos. And who knows, there may be even some continuing continuity from this material as well. But while you're subscribed, happy, why don't you go ahead and subscribe to the Hebrew channel for more awesome shit. And we'll see you next time. God bless America and good night, everyone. But guys, I'm back. When I went to go pee, I got tired and decided to take a nap afterwards. So did anybody take my spot? Hello, hey, where did everybody go? Well, shit, honey, you got any more of that white powder stuff? I need it. My back is killing me. I want to put a little bit inside my chocolate chocolate chip ice cream. Hunter, where are you, Hunter? <laughs> I love crack. Do, 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 do. That's all, folks.